Hey Nature School, how's it going? My name is Mr. Mike, and this week we're going to be talking about caterpillars. Now, caterpillars come from two specific types of animals, moths and butterflies. They're the larval stage. Now, if you remember or have seen Miss Melissa's video on monarch butterflies, you know what the larval stage is. But if you don't, we're going to help you out by showing you right here. So the larval stage is after the egg hatches, but before the adult stage. Today we're going to be talking about three really important things. The first one is why caterpillars are important. The second one is where we can find caterpillars. And the third one is how we can help caterpillars. First, let's talk about why caterpillars are important. Caterpillars provide a lot of food for a variety of different animals that we have here in Ohio and throughout the world. They provide tons of food for things like birds and and a variety of other insects that might eat um, caterpillars or other bugs, for example. If caterpillars do manage to reach adulthood, then they become beneficial pollinators. So they're helping even past their larval stage. Some species of caterpillars are natural pruners. So most of them are what we call herbivores. Who knows what an herbivore is? If you said they only eat plants, you're absolutely right. Some of us are like herbivores too. Some of us might be vegetarians, for example. These caterpillars that are herbivores kind of eat some of the leaves and things that might be overgrowth so that the tree can grow properly. Now some of them can be a little bit of a pest. For example, like the tomato hornworm seen here. Now these guys can wipe out your entire tomato crop pretty quickly. Now some of these caterpillars are invasive. Does anybody remember or know what that term means? If you said that they're in a habitat where they don't belong, you're right. So they were brought here, in this case, the European corn borer, which can be a huge, huge pest seen right here. They can wipe out an entire corn crop pretty quickly. So caterpillars are very beneficial to a lot of different animals, especially birds when they get here from South America and lower latitudes when they get here in the spring and summer. They're traveling a really, really far distance and they're not really taking many breaks and they need a lot of food and a lot of nutrients to make up for all that energy they just expelled. Some of the caterpillars that we have here in Ohio have developed kind of their own defense or adapted to some of the predators around them. One example is the saddleback caterpillar seen right here. And the hickory horn devil seen right here. What did they have that you noticed? If you said they had spikes or horns or bristly-like markings on their back, you're right. Those sometimes can be venomous. Yep, I said it. We have venomous caterpillars here in Ohio. Scary, huh? But not venomous enough to hurt us. If you do manage to come in contact or see one of these bristly-like or hairy-like caterpillars, it's best that you just leave it alone so we don't have any accidents and you don't have to worry about getting poked in your fingers. All right, so the next step is to talk about where we can find these caterpillars. 
where do you guys think we can find them? If you said in a tree, for example, you're absolutely right. If you said in your garden, you're absolutely right because we just talked about those things. If you said in a pollinator patch and some flowers, you're absolutely right. These are all excellent places that you can find them. Truthfully, you can find some even in the grass. They prefer a variety of different types of grasses or clover in some cases. Most caterpillars can be attached to their food preference. When you guys learned from Miss Melissa, what caterpillar did we talk about? If you said monarchs, you're absolutely right. And who remembers their food preference? That's right. If you said milkweed, you're absolutely right. So if we can find those plants, we can most often, not always, find those caterpillars. Searching in the day can be pretty easy if you know where to look. A good place to really start is, number one, your garden. Number two would be somewhere where there's some low-lying trees and branches that you can see up underneath because these caterpillars don't like to lay on top. Remember, they have predators. They like to get underneath and eat those plants and things from the bottom. So, and lastly, a really good time to look is at the end of summer, right before fall, which we're in, in the evening because it's super easy to spot these guys out feeding around, especially moth caterpillars because most moths, who knows when they do most of their searching and foraging. At night, that's right, if you said they're nocturnal, which means they spend most of their active time in the evening or at night flying around, you're absolutely right. Looking in the evening can be super fun because you get out at a different time and also super exciting because the caterpillars probably aren't going to be the only things you could see. You could probably see or hear an owl or you might see a variety of different things when you're out on a little night hike with your parents or grandparents or friends. And lastly, probably the most important thing we're going to talk about today is what can you guys do to help caterpillars. Anybody think of anything good? I know I can. The first thing we can do is if we see them, don't squish them or any bug or insect for that reason. Those things are one, maybe eating another insect or two, providing us with pollination or something like that. So it's best to just leave them alone because that could be food for something else. Another really important thing is talk to your parents or grandparents about what they're spraying in their garden. Now, we all don't like spiders and things crawling around on our house, but if we're spraying a bunch of chemicals and different things that can harm them, like for example, what has happened to the monarch butterflies, then we're not gonna have a lot of valuable food for a lot of the birds that people, especially around Lake Erie, love to see. So keeping track of what's being sprayed so we're not killing everything outside, maybe just something that is specific to one type of insect that could be harming your home or trying to get in your home. And lastly, the most probably second most important thing is providing these caterpillars that are food specific with a variety of food there so that they can eat it. So the loss of some types of grass and especially tall prairie grasses and things like that that we've seen throughout Ohio are drastically harming some species of caterpillars or as they reach adults, moths or butterflies because they rely very heavily on these specific foods. Now we're going to take a little exploration and go out in the evening and see if we, as in you and me, can find some caterpillars. You guys ready? All right, let's go. All right, Nature School, now it's time to go out and see if we can actually find some of these caterpillars at night. We've looked a little bit while it's daylight, but as soon as the sun goes down, we're going to get out and try to spot some of these ones. Some tools that you guys might need are definitely you're going to need an adult. Probably want to take an adult out with you just so you guys are in a safe area and you know that you can get back successfully. The next thing you're going to need is maybe a headlamp like this. So mine flicks on and flicks off and then you can also use a big light like this one. It's pretty bright and it focuses in real big and then it's real fine which can help you when you're looking up in the trees. 
And we'll show you guys how that works a little bit when we get out here. So right here we have tent caterpillars. And these guys are pretty easy to find. Um, there are about 26 different species of tent caterpillars in the U.S. Um, that have been found. But these guys, sometimes you only see what they've left behind, which are these kind of tent-like structures where they all, um, all the eggs are laid and the larva will grow up into be adults. These caterpillars, if you kind of see, they're kind of jerking their heads back and forth. That's their response to um, movement around them and a variety of different really cool things. So these guys are going to be f mostly food for birds and things that are coming through through the fall migration. And then some of them will make it to adulthood. These two leaves right here can be a species of leaf roller caterpillars, which they can be good for small arachnids like spiders and centipedes and things like that that can get in there and get those caterpillars. But these can also be spiders, funnel spiders, so you have to be careful too when you unroll one. So we'll unroll one of these and see. Right here we have a cocoon of some sort made by presumably a moth because they usually make cocoons which are a little bit different from a chrysalis and so sometimes these caterpillars will overwinter so they'll stay in this cocoon and wait until next season throughout the winter or they'll pop out right before summer's over and be a fall adult and then lay eggs and those eggs will make it um, into the next year as they lie in the ground or lie on leaves that have fallen off the trees and line in leaf litter for a little while. So a pretty cool find. I'm not sure which kind it is, but maybe we'll be able to find out. So here are some young caterpillars and they look like they managed to dry up pretty well. They had some of those sp spiky, bristly hairs that we talked about. And this right here next to my thumb is a wasp gall of some sort. But these guys look like they're all dried up and that they, they didn't make it here. Some trees that are really good to find caterpillars under are ones like hickory and oaks, ones with low-lying leaves so that you guys can actually see them. Because if they're way up 30 feet up in a tree, it's going to be really, really hard for you guys to spot these caterpillars. So right here we have a sassafras tree, and this is another sign of caterpillars or some other type of insect eating the leaves here. So you can see all of them are pretty scoured up there and picked over pretty heavily and that's another way we can spot and see them and as it gets darker today what we'll do is we'll shine a light up there and hopefully be able to see them a little better especially if they're chunky and have some bright colors to them all right guys so when it's this dark you got to keep a sharp eye out for these caterpillars they can be pretty tough to spot we're looking at a walnut tree right here. We can see up here some of these leaves have been chewed on and eaten. There's a moth right there. Not a caterpillar, but he was at one point. But that's not what we're here for today. Because normally I'd be all over that thing. And the cool thing about my light is I can focus real good to see anybody's hanging out nobody on this one all right guys no caterpillars but there's a little couple gray specks up there and there are plant hoppers we can see a little spider and some galls
here's another little spider sack. No caterpillars here, but signs of caterpillars and lots of spiders. Lots of spiders. That's the good thing about nighttime nature is if you don't find what you're looking for, there's always something else that you're not usually familiar with. Because who goes out like crazy Mr. Mike and goes searching for moths and caterpillars and spiders at nighttime? The trick is, is some of these caterpillars are so well blended in, they might look like sticks or the leaf, parts of the leaf itself. where they move extremely slow so they can't be seen by predators like birds and things. So really, really tough to spot them. And then there are some that are just so gigantic and huge they're nearly impossible to miss. But no such luck. moth friend right there. It's like a Ypsilon dart moth. Just hanging out. Alright guys, it looks like we struck out for the most part, but the benefit is, is we'll probably see some more and I'll be able to show you guys some pictures of some cool ones that I found around the parks and in my own backyard. So we'll show you guys those and then hopefully you guys can go out and explore and find your own. All right, Nature School, I hope you guys had an awesome time hanging out with me today. We found some pretty cool caterpillars, didn't we? Good one. See you next time.